<laughs> Two parter. All right, and we're back. Um, I still have Kevin Gill with me. I kept him hostage this whole time um, <laughs> as we tried to figure out what was going on. Um, but we're back. There's two people uh, with a space between their seat uh, sitting there, and they, they probably should have got up. Maybe their reaction time was slowed or whatever. But the wrestlers make contact, you know, between each other. The wrestlers fall down. They even slide a little. But they stop short, and you can see it perfectly from the camera angle. They never make contact with these two people or, or their chairs. And so, like, everyone's just – the wrestlers have hit the ground. They've slid. There's, like, a, a half a second pause. And then <laughs> both of these people's chairs at the same time just collapse under them uh, and they just fall on the floor. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> thankfully, they weren't hurt. They just fell on their butts and they got up or whatever. But it was just such a surreal moment. And uh, Lenny gave me like a little elbow. Like as soon as the chair started to fall, he gave me a little elbow like, don't say anything. You know what I mean? But it's like, it, it it just goes back to the point I was making on, and uh, prior that sometimes when these things happen, like piss jug or whatever, it's a disservice to the viewer to not acknowledge what the viewer is thinking or to ask or answer the questions that the viewer is is asking. And same thing. So the they all hit the chairs fell. I got the elbow and I said, uh, Whoever it was, Tony Deppin or Jordan Oliver, I was just like, Jordan Oliver hit a 7-10 fucking split or whatever. You know what I mean? Just because, yeah, what else? What else? You know what I mean? Like, and that's one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. Like, I don't think ever in my life again, I'll ever see two chairs collapse at free fall speed when no one made contact with them in any way. You know what I mean? At a wrestling show on pay-per-view. it was, And the camera shot captured it perfectly. So... Shout out to GoPro. <laughs> it, was just, it was just so surreal. And obviously, best wishes and thanks to those fans for coming down uh, to the show. You know what I mean? And maybe, obviously, sometimes it's a great idea when everyone around you gets up and runs. That includes you. That yep. includes you. As I like to say, the wrestlers aren't going to get out of your way. You got to get the fuck out of their way. <laughs> so, but anyway, I love that story. And, uh, it's one of the one of the GCW shows from the last two two months or two three months or so. So if anyone out there in TV land uh, can identify that episode, I would like to or that event live on Fight TV. I would like to watch it back. Fair enough. I you know I've been very fortunate, I guess if you want to look at it that way, mm -hmm. to have been to have been front row at a GCW show where I have had to get my ass out of the way. GTFO. Because, because I had a, a Nick Wayne coming at me. Oh, man. He's a fast mover. <laughs> and I got up and he sat in my chair and I was like, by all means, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I mean, of all possible outcomes, that's the best possible outcome. It, it, was, um, it was in Chicago at the Art of War Games. Wow. Oh, man. What a fucking event. That so truly this. was. Candidly, in your opinion, now you've been going to shows for a couple of years and whatever. In terms of the atmosphere in that room and the audience reactions, like the way they responded to what was happening, does that Art of War Games night stand out to you as like a like an all-time great night? Or where, where does it sit in your uh, viewpoint? Yeah, that was one of the more fun shows I've been to because it was just so different than other shows that you go to, right? Because when else am I going to go to a, a war game style match? A double in, ring, double cage. In my lifetime, probably not unless DCW does it again. But um, <laughs> that's because it was kind of a different feel and a different type of match. And I don't want to say it's like the stakes were high, but like it felt like there was like a story to back all of that action up. Like it was kind sure. of like a perfect storm for me, especially because I have, oh, I didn't used to, but now I enjoy deathmatch wrestling quite a lot. And it wasn't quite deathmatch, but there were a lot of tubes and sure. 
and it was blood yeah like yeah <laughs> i was into it so and, that was a, lot and of a mix fun. of styles you know like that the war games itself you know you have guys like justice and mance warner and aj gray like so much so much talent in that in that match itself but then you think of other stuff that happened on the show you know what i mean it just felt like such a an amazing historic event but to me it's one of those events that the the way the the way the crowd was responding, the volume of their response and everything, it just felt like really um, special to me, like in terms of, because also to me, like the people there got the best view of it. Like in a way, it's difficult to capture a show of that magnitude. I think if, if there is another one, I think it'll be filmed even better. But if you were there in the room, you truly got the best view because there was stuff happening constantly so that it was impossible for the cameras to show everything that was happening. You know what I mean? But it was, it was something else, man, uh, uh, a night for the ages. And uh, I wonder, I wonder if that's an attendance record for GCW in Chicago. It must be because that thing was fucking insane. It was packed. That and... shit was so hot that that shit was so hot that Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez came to the show. <laughs> <laughs> a first in GCW history. <laughs> I I was having a blast at that show. That was so much fun. And you're you're right. Like that's one of the best parts about being able to go to shows live and being able to experience it for yourself is to see matches like that where there's so much going on, or like scramble matches where there's again so much going on, and you know the camera can only get you know one or two pieces of that, but there's always so much more. And to be 100%. able to see, and like, just that feeling, you know, as like, you know, I went to see uh, not just this past Sunday, but uh, uh, the previous AEW pay-per-view, uh, they play them in the movie theaters also. So I went to the movie theater to see the AEW pay-per-view and it was fucking cool. You know what I mean? It, it was, it was super fucking cool to see it in that, uh, in that context. You know what I mean? But I for, now I forget, I was going to make some other point about, pay-per-view but i forgot what it was the point oh, the point is though as fun as it was and the big screen and the sound and all that and i i gave it you know i'd give it like a, a nine out of ten or a ten out of ten like would recommend um just like watching a concert on a live stream hey it's better than not seeing a concert but nothing can compare to being there like to you know what i mean when you feel you feel it you know what i mean and that's you know what I'm saying? That that's a whole other ball game. That whole, yeah, just there's that rush, that energy, that experience is just unlike, unlike, unlike any other. And you can go to, and that's the other cool thing too about wrestling in general is like you can go and you can see, you know, a handful of the same people. You know, GCW is great at, at having their staples and bringing in, you know, other people to kind of supplement that. But you're not getting same matches every time sure each each you know wrestler brings something different to the table or the type of match or where it's at or the crowd like there's always like that there's always a variable to it it's not like cookie cutter stamping out the same thing all the time a hundred percent i love it i love the diversity in the shows and again going back to ecw it, it reminds me of the best parts of ecw where you would People in the in the day back then would say, "Oh, ECW, that's just garbage," and people hit each other with chairs or whatever. And that's what people say. Some people say about GCW, but the truth is, if you go and watch the shows, both in both cases of GCW and ECW, they're both very well laid out shows. They they build to to big things. But if you listen to the audience, the ovations and the pops and the responses are are incredible. Like. There's something uh, there's something to be said for all that stuff like that's that's vital that that's to me that's the sign that that you're doing it right you know what I mean agree so just a couple more questions then we'll really for this time go to questions from chat um, and then we'll we'll finish up if you could go back in time what would you tell a ten year old version of yourself wow deep. If I could go back in time and tell a 10-year-old version of myself anything, I would have told myself, 
you can achieve anything that you set your mind to and you need to just start working on it immediately because it would have just expedited things. You know what I mean? It didn't, I didn't learn until later that there ain't nothing to it, but to do it, you know what I mean? And it's like, if you put in the hours and, and have the ability and whatever you can, you can get in, you can get in the arena. You know what I'm saying? You could get in the, get in the building. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so I think I would have told myself that uh, because yeah, just believing, believing in yourself is like, well, among some of the most powerful stuff that there is, you know what I mean? And we live in a world now where uh, any kind of public figure or performer is open to and uh, by, you know, through social media, open to and susceptible to like, you know, nonstop attacks and hatred and threats and, you know, whatever, every, every possible thing. But underneath that all, if you believe in yourself and, uh, and you have good people out there that support you, you can kind of, just keep moving, moving through it. You know what I mean? You can't really dwell on it because it is what it is. Don't feed the trolls. I think is, is sage wisdom. It's timeless OG wisdom. And um, so many people and they mean well, and they're making their point because they're dunking on these people. But uh, it feels like so many people just retweet and well, I should say quote tweet every shit take on stuff and everyone who's, saying terrible things and it's like if it's some public figure that did some horrible thing you know then do your thing but if it's some name seven number account with an egg profile that wrote some terrible thing about you or people or whatever it seems counterproductive to broadcast and amplify their message you know what i mean i consider Consider your timeline like you would consider your home. You know what I mean? Would you just let, do you just put anybody on it, in, in it as well? You know what I mean? Or do you have standards? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I am a big believer in trying to support loudly. And if there's something that I, if there's something or somebody I don't like, I just won't say anything at all. Like the silence does enough for me. Sure. Because I would rather like, broadcast and if it, things that I enjoy. What you like. And right. And if that person put out a shirt, guess what? You're not buying it. If that person is the main event of a show, guess what? That may, may make you more interested in the show across town. Or you may, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it may be. But you can still move forward and be happy and it, like some people build their whole life around, I don't, I hate this person or something where somehow my life is, is what it is because this person is doing their thing. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, it, it, it shit is crazy. But I, I think that's what's so important is to, is to believe in yourself because what other people say or think or do really doesn't often have very much bearing on you. Obviously what certain people think and say the people you work for, the people you work with, uh, people you travel with, et cetera, et cetera. But just random person that hates something or everything, it's like, if your biggest contribution to the world is what you hate, what did you con con contribute? You contribute nothing. Do you know what I mean? And it doesn't, I always say, like, uh, I don't like olives. You know, I don't give a fuck about olives. They suck. But I don't actually say that because... Who gives a fuck? No one cares what I think. What does anyone care what I think about olives? If you like olives right now, you like them. You're not going to stop eating them. You're going to continue to put them on whatever you want. I personally don't like them, but it doesn't define me, make me interesting, edgy, cool, or alternative to go hang out at the fucking um, olive bar at the local Whole Foods and, and say shit to people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Six you out there just slinging olive-based insults at at random strangers <laughs> yeah no time today like a hundred percent i got better yeah, well, like to do what, with my what time you, yeah what you don't like shouldn't define you and really doesn't define you and if it does define you i think you need to readjust your parameters in a sense because right on the other side of the coin like what we're talking about here is like enjoying stuff and being into stuff and and uh following and supporting stuff being part of a of a tribe if you will like it's a great feeling do you know what i mean it's a sense of community everyone's tied together everyone's on the same page it's a very very cool feeling it's way cooler than 
you know, God, you know, I'm saying fuck this and fuck that. Like, you know what I mean? And there are plenty of things to be fuck this and fuck that. But we live in a day and age where I think we have to reserve our outrage or whatever. Instead of being mad about nothing all the time, uh, there's a lot of uh, just causes and a lot of movements that we could put a tiny fraction of our time into and it would benefit our world and our culture uh, tremendously. Do you know what I mean? Instead of hating on a brand in rest, you know what I mean? Look, all, it's just like going back to like video games where there was back in the day, people, the tribalism of, oh, well, fuck uh, Nintendo because Sony is the move. Well, fuck Microsoft. And then that becomes like someone's thing. That's their core thing. Like, so like, what's you in a nutshell? Oh, fuck Xbox. Like, uh, it just seems so, un- it, it, maybe it's just me, but that seems like the most uninteresting thing ever. No, I I agree with you. I I agree with you 110 percent on pretty much all of that. Um, it doesn't make you interesting, right? No, it doesn't make you cool. It doesn't it doesn't make people want to hang out with you. It doesn't get you respect. Like there's no there's no like yeah, net what's the gain to like being a hater mm-hmm. like of anything. Like there just uh- isn't. Yeah, like show me a paid hater. You know what I mean? There's not even like a, a spot for you. It's not even like you could just hate in the underground and then you get to be a hater on a giant platform. Like, oh, I want to be one of the traveling haters that tour Madison Square Garden and all the arenas. Like there is no, there's no spot, but you could be the pe- person that's taking pictures at shows. You could be doing interviews. You could be involved in any myriad of arts creative endeavors supportive endeavors there's so many things you could do to have your fingerprint on stuff and be woven into the thread of the wonderful tapestry that is the independent pro wrestling community it's all it's all right here there's so many ways for people to fit in even even if it's just as in a vocal fan like, yeah, buy a ticket and come down. Like, that, that makes wrestling happen. Like, buy a ticket and please have a great time. Have the best time, please. Seriously. Right. We all have could great, use it, man. Have a great time. Tell your friends. Like, Bring your friends. That's one of the greatest things. Whenever I meet people after GCW shows, and they'll, they'll tell me, like, these four people never saw a show ever. We just brought them. And those people, every time... It's like they just took acid and went to like see the Grateful Dead or something. They're just like, oh my God, like I can't believe what I just saw. Like they've been blown away. They're, they'll be like, I've gone to UFC, I've gone to this, I've gone to the Super Bowl. Like this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. You know what I mean? And, and they're at the Ukrainian Cultural Center in LA, you know, for GCW. It's, it's insane to me, but it is a really special thing. And uh, I encourage people to get involved. And like you said, Sometimes I think people get get it in their head that to be involved means they have to be, whether it's be a hater, be a this, be a that. Literally buying a ticket, sitting in the seat and enjoying the show. You are a huge, huge part of what is going on. And if you don't believe me, look at ECW. ECW had all the talent, had everything going on. Those people in those seats are like F. For 50% of the magic, you know what I mean? In terms of that's where the energy comes from. That's where the response comes from. Without that, it, it's nothing. You know what I mean? So never let the person in the seat be the unsung hero because you are a supporter. You are a contributor. You are part of it in, in the same way that anyone who does anything is. And I, I mean that sincerely. And to anybody that doesn't think that the fans are important, like watch some of those empty arena shows, especially Ooh. now, and be like, like you can tell there's a difference. <laughs> Not that there's yeah, anything the, wrong. Those were great for what we what had to work had to with, but nothing beats having a live audience there. So, and I mean a lot, a live audience, like people that are are primed and ready to explode and. And it's just crazy. You know what I mean? And I love that the, the modern day indie show, if you will, uh, on the top tier shows, it's just all killer, no filler. There's no bullshit on the show. There's no like start them off hot and slow them down for five matches and ticket sellers and whatever. It's just like a fucking wrecking ball. You know what I mean? Just comes through. Boom. And it's just fucking amazing. And you're like, holy fuck. You know what I mean? Maybe you get an intermission. Maybe you don't. 
<laughs> you just right? never know. <laughs> Depends on who's gone over their time. <laughs> Amen, sister. Amen. And what time you have to be out of the event. <laughs> right. Is there is there a late fee? <laughs> Big time question. <laughs> So, how do you take your pancakes? If uh, like, what's I your go-to? Take, uh, well, I have a go-to and I have a variant. Let's let's hear them both. I'm down. The go-to is just your standard butter syrup. Nothing crazy, nothing fancy. Just the original style pancake. The variant is like the chocolate chip pancake with the the whipped cream and the drizzling of chocolate sauce. Nice. Those are both excellent choices. They're if both you're... like the pinnacle of their art, in my opinion. Oh, you know, of course, they, all the different berries and shit are fine, but traditional chocolate chip. So I like to put peanut butter on my chocolate chip pancakes. Really? Do you just get a side of peanut butter or will they incorporate it? Or do you do I... it at home? I usually do it at home um, or I'll ask for a side and I'll like kind of make like a sandwich out of it. So it's like really? pancake, peanut butter and more pancakes. Okay. All right. I am uh, I may do some engineering. Because chocolate and peanut butter are, are BFFs and my yeah, BFFs. Yeah. The, king, the, king, <laughs> the kings of flavor. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> the best. So I have um, one last question for you and then we'll go to questions from chat. And then we're done. So, but I want you to take this little journey with me. So like, take, like, put yourself in, get your mind right. We're taking a journey. You're hungry. We're going to the store and you want something sweet and you, you're kind of meandering the aisles. You have everything in mind. You turn down the cookie aisle and you're like, I love cookies. Who doesn't love cookies? And you go and you decide you want you don't want you don't want a chocolate chip cookie, even though you're they're your favorite. Sure. You don't sure. want a peanut butter cookie. You go to America's favorite cookie, which is the Oreo. Okay. And you you look at all the Oreos and there's all the flavors, but you don't want any of the flavors. You just want a chocolate cookie, white cream center Oreo. So but you white still have cream, choices. aka hydrogenated oil. <laughs> <laughs> cream free cream, but it is delicious. But I digress. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Of course. But um, so you so you still have options. You can get like the thin Oreos or you can get the single stuffed Oreos Mm -hmm. or you can get the double stuffed Oreos Mm -hmm. or you can even get like the mega stuffed Oreos. May I ask, when we talk about the thin Oreo, is there the thin mint Oreo variants? No, this is strictly chocolate cookie, white cream, no additional flavor. Yes, yes, yes. Um, okay. Ooh. Again, uh, going with the old school, I'm torn between the just original OG Oreo and it's relative, the thin. But if I could only have one, it would be the OG, original Oreo, traditional level of goo. So you're a single stuff guy. Got it. Single. So I will say, while I respect your opinion, that is the it's unofficial. It, it's the unofficial incorrect answer to the question. Everybody knows that the best Oreo is indeed the double stuffed Oreo. But I you would, uh, feel free on, to like what you like. On your thank you. On your recommendation, I would try one again with an open mind. Uh, I haven't had a double one, a double stuffed Oreo. I couldn't tell you in how long. So I'll definitely next time I, if I have an opportunity to have one, I will have one. So I will say, I, will try I want to say in maybe in like the 20 teens at some point, um, Oreo did change the recipe for their cream, their, their really? creamy center. Yes. <laughs> so, so maybe. It's dairy free cream. They were all OGs of the vegan creamer. <laughs> It's like vegan, it's cream with no dairy or no dairy. any milky component. But I'm sorry, please, your point. To my, well, my point was maybe try one again because since they've changed the, the mm. center recipe, it might not sure. be as, you know. Interesting. I'm, I'm super down now. Uh, 
The only thing I'm worried about is I have to get a whole package of them to try one. So I want to go, go, to, go can, to like a go to like a gas station and you can get like the little sleeve of like four. Oh, done. Absolutely done. Next, uh, I'll be on the road for GCW this weekend. So I will 100 percent cut those at the rest stop or whatever. Hell yeah. I'm a problem solver. So done. <laughs> solved. I got the update too. Now I know it's the new formula. So I'm in. And maybe it'll still be just as terrible as you remember, but maybe it won't be. It's not even that I think it's terrible. I just thought it was like. Too much example, in your mouth. Yeah. Like, well, I wouldn't say it that way, but more just like. I would. The, ori- the original <laughs> formula was dope, but they never come at it the other way. Why not try double, double strength size cookies with the same amount of cream or double stuff with double cookie. So it's just like a giant or like a Norio. <laughs> Huh? Huh? I mean, feel free to go that route. <laughs> I'm um, Oreo. Arr, arr, arr. And if you don't like them, um, Jimmy Lloyd will probably eat them. Oh, he I definitely. Once, I once remember uh, hearing a story oh. on Spaces <laughs> about, about the chicken nuggets. <laughs> the famous chicken nugget story. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> he did it <laughs> it's, and again I know like with uh, modern day fast food you could just or any era of fast food you could just leave it around seemingly for years and nothing happens to it I worked with a guy uh, Bo Tiora back in the day and they uh, and he worked in the testing department at IDOS and they took a Twinkie, bought it out of the vending machine, took it, unwrapped it, and just put it on top of this TV in the QA area and left it there for uh, a few years. Uh, they marked, they wrote the date on it in Sharpie and uh, left it there for a few years. And then one day, uh, some bets started being made and whatever, or a pot was being put up for wood that would go to someone who would eat the Twinkie. And uh, and Bo ate the Twinkie, and nothing happened to him. Just nothing. He just ate it. This horrible, dry. The um, <laughs> the cream just like like an egg yolk or something. It just like fell out. Like as soon as like a dry, dusty thing just fell out. But he did to his credit. He you know got it in. But uh, so he yeah, got the got the cream food. in his mouth. He ate, ended up getting the cream in his mouth and he ended up eating it all. Good to know. All of it. But yeah, uh, multiple year old Oreo, um, freaky. I don't recommend it, but do what you gotta. <laughs> and on that note, Christopher, do we have questions from the chat? Yes, uh, I was able to grab questions from the chat before we completely lost all power and went dark. Uh, we are actually still dark at this time. But that's okay. I saw that this we hit record, be, so yeah, this is gonna be great content for everybody to find out later. Hell that being yeah. said, uh that being said, uh let's get questions from chat and then I have a bone to pick with the uh with the man uh, Kevin Gill. Uh, 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 so oh. first we're gonna start with uh the ICP story that came up, uh, Vic wanted to know, did you have to wear Juggalo makeup when you refed for ICP? No, uh, I never, I had no time during my uh, multiple year engagement with ICP did I ever wear uh, makeup or face paint. I was always just KG, Kevin Gill, <laughs> which is cool because yourself. every every other character in their universe was like that, but they let me be me, which is cool. Because I'll be honest, at the time when they offered me to be their commentator and do all these pay-per-views and stuff, if they were going to be like, hey, we're going to call you fucking Scarecrow Larry and fucking <laughs> put you in a gimmick, I'd probably be like, shit, well, all right, then, call me Scarecrow Larry. You know what I mean? <laughs> Next time I see you, I'm calling you Scarecrow Larry. <laughs> With like a big... A big FL on my um, uh, overalls, you know, and all the hay sticking out, but with the headset on. <laughs> but maybe the headset has like a, a fro on it. You know what I mean? Like perched. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's getting tweeted out for sure. <laughs> Please. 
um for Halloween. Just be Scarecrow Larry. Scarecrow Larry. <laughs> what up though? I'm Scarecrow Larry from Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> All right. So uh, next, next question. Um, Vic wanted to know, what type of prep do you do before a match? Um, well, in a perfect world, what I like to do is uh, I love to just sit down, look over the card, just kind of think about the recent history of the participants and – and optimally have the time to be able to go and talk to the participants. Like I love to just spend a few minutes talking with everybody just to kind of feel people's vibe and tone and vernacular and what they've been up to lately besides just the, you know what I'm saying? Like the really core basic stuff, (laughs) because sometimes knowing where someone's at and how they feel and just their vibe for me, it helps with the broad strokes of trying to kind of paint and highlight who they are. You know what I mean? Uh, if that makes sense. No, definitely. Yeah, it's, so that basically, little... it's like, go over the card, think about it, talk to the people involved in the match. And then one thing I left out, which is sometimes there's very specific things that you just want to know off the top of your head. Like, Oh, this guy's done this for 900 days in a row or you know what I'm saying? This guy beat these nine people in the last eight days. There's sometimes very specific things like that that you need to know. But for the most part, it's I find it to be broad strokes and some specific moments. So a little bit of prep, a little bit of talking. But you ha- the, the, a, a key ingredient for me is that you have to be able to do it with none of those things. So to me, the, the prep stuff is great and the being able to talk to people is great. And sometimes that stuff happens and sometimes that stuff doesn't happen. Sometimes I'm not booked to call a show. And then as the show is going on the air, I'm told I'm calling the show. Do you know what I mean? And I can go call the show. I may not. I might say the person's last name wrong. I may not know that six weeks ago, Alex Shelley gave them a ride to the airport. But you know what I mean? I can I can capture the vibe and put it down. And, and that to me is I. I'm I'm proud of my ability to do that. You know what I mean? So uh, I come from an improv background. So I like the improvisational aspect across all of wrestling because the real magic is the organic reactions. And it's the audience is not putting their reactions through a filter and neither am I. Like I'm reacting to it. You know what I'm saying? In real time. Uh, Yeah. So I like, I like to be surprised. I like to not know. And Brett is such a fucking genius and like a weirdo and a weirdo in the sense of like keeping secrets and shit. So that in other words, when you're just sitting there and John Moxley is in the ring and you're just like, holy fuck, you know what I mean? Like uh, those things just happen. You know what I mean? So uh, I don't know. Sorry. that That's my answer. No, that's great. That's uh, interesting to hear. And, and it sounds like, I mean, it, your prep is whatever it takes that day, whatever right. needs to be done for that instance. 100%. Commentary is hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely harder than it looks, you know what I mean? Because it's one of those things that apparently everyone can do it, whether they've ever done it or not. But you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. I'll mm-hmm. just keep trying. I'll just keep trying my best. Well, we appreciate that. Keep doing I, that I, best. I, I appreciate the chance to do it, man. And uh yeah, right. It's uh it's one of those things, man. Wrestling. Wrestling. <laughs> Wrestling, well, baby. <laughs> well, we got one more question from chat. It's from our VIP Vic. It's his staple question. So, Kevin, in, in your opinion, who has the best gear of all time? Oh, the best gear of all time? Oh, wow. Hold on a second. I got to really think about this. The best gear of all time. I got to think, are you going to go flashy? Are you going to go trademark? Or 
just OG gear where it's simple, but it's, you know, it's, it's a memory. There's a lot of choices out there. Mm, man. All right. I think the uh, best gear ever is the, uh, it's the Macho Man Randy Savage. It's when he graduated to like the robe had like the sticks inside it. So he could open them up like wings or whatever, and just have that big purple with the uh, with the glasses on the back. <laughs> that whole that robe, that whole everything. I think that that would have to be up there. And uh, a, a close second runner up would be Ultimo Dragon when he like the whole like uh, like lame foil sort of application uh, covering his entire body with a special nod. The business suit, uh, great Sasuke. You know, great business suit and mask, great Sasuke. Outstanding. So you covered <laughs> a little bit of everything there. That's great. Oh, and if I can, can we give an honorable super OG mention? Because I've been watching uh, a lot of uh, early 80s stuff this week. Uh, super shout out to like 1984 era masked superstar. He had this fucking amazing gold. I don't even know what the fuck this thing is made of, but he's got this gold shirt on and a gold mat uh, with his regular mask, superstar mask. But holy, I'll send you guys a picture of it. It's just like, it's stunning. Like, I I want this look up. (laughs) It's like some gold 80s fabric that is no longer made because it's toxic. Right, right. This will burst into flame at any point. (laughs) Yeah, it's like some like a controversial hybrid of like whatever rayon and polyester and like whatever five other man made or, you know, chemical concoctions. (laughs) I'll send you a picture. It's literally the gear is way ahead of its time. And it's just his like do an interview gear. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. This is every day. He does not does not dress for comfort alone. Absolutely not. <laughs> well, oh, those man. were uh, those were questions from chat. Thanks for uh, surviving the questions from chat. We'll see if you can survive this though, because I have a bone Uh-oh. to pick. Uh-oh. I have Here a bone we go. to after pick. All, oh man! After all this, after all this love, after all this positivity, There's, now I there, get roasted. No. Well, there were two comments made that I just disagree with. Number one, who doesn't like olives? Olives are wonderful. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't like olives. I'm on team Kevin Gill on this. No olives for Val well, pancakes. If I, if I may, <laughs> would you agree or disagree that the olive is overly present? And maybe you're not exposed to it because I, as a humble veg- and lowly vegetarian, I'm often the person who gets the veggie sub, the mm. veggie pizza, the veggie mm. nachos at whatever place. And it seems like everywhere in the world is like, ah, eh, cheese, whatever, this, whatever, this one. Oh, olive. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> like, it's just, I know they come in a giant fucking can like this fucking big, but I mean, it's so omnipresent and they're so tasteless. Couldn't we just get something? That, well, how about just that part? The Are olives overused as a throw it on top of everything in the food marketplace? Not in, I mean, not in my world. I mean, I mean, because (laughs) I'm not a vegetarian, maybe I just don't have to deal with that. (laughs) You don't have to deal with as many random olives. (laughs) No, because as a child, I enjoyed... I enjoyed the canned olives that I would put on my fingers like I would make little witch fingers and have olives and eat them off my fingers. I've seen drawings. And then I graduated to bugles, you know? (laughs) Now, uh, and part of the the olive point that I didn't even, uh, I didn't realize I didn't finish until you just said that, was the (laughs) idea that, so, hey, I don't like olives, but who gives a fuck what I like? And whether or not I like olives, they remain a super zillion dollar industry that billions of people enjoy. The oil that comes out of them is essential and delicious. Mm. But just for me, fuck olives. But why talk yeah. about it? Because who gives a fuck? They're like, oh, you don't like that? Oh, that's like someone who's like, oh, I don't like salt or I don't like pepper or I don't like mayonnaise. Like it doesn't define you. It's just it's like, oh, whatever. OK, cool. No mayo for him. Well, I'll take all your olives. Let's just, so, let's just put and, it that uh, way. By all means, I'll get them all on the side. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah, as, as a lowly vegetarian, when you get a sandwich or whatever, and there's just literally like like fistfuls of fucking olives thrown all over the whole thing, and it, it, 
In other words, call that an olive sandwich. Call it an olive pizza because that's what it is. The most, be dis- real. The most disappointing pizza I ever received was by pure accident. Um, my order got mixed up with somebody else's order and literally, literally it was a pizza, cheese, just green olives on that bitch. Yeah. It was, I was so disappointed. I was like, I, I couldn't even eat it. I threw it away. I was so frustrated. Wow. So yeah. for me, if those, if those were jalapenos, if they were green peppers, any bell pepper, any uh, mushroom, spinach, on and on, broccoli, on and on and on, it would be delicious. But olive, it's like it's, it just seems. Why would you do that to a poor pizza? Yeah. What did the pizza do to you? <laughs> well, wait, that was only one part of a, of a multi bone to pick, right? Yes, yes. Yes. There's another bone. Yes. There's Sorry, one more I will bone. Give you, I will give you the floor. <laughs> no, it's fine because I think Val should have stepped all over this when she, when she heard it. But the issue of you having to buy an entire package of Oreos to try one Oreo is not an issue. That is the benefit. <laughs> you get to buy an entire package of Oreos and get to eat all of the Oreos. Who buys one Oreo? Who buys well, a sleeve is- of four? <laughs> oh, no, I'm all in. I'm all in for this. In other words, for a cookie I like, yeah, I'm all in on the package. Give me the Costco uh, edition. But if it's going to be too much of what I call the goo part of it, I might not want the whole package, quite honestly. All they right, they so, would kind of linger around. No, I no. mean, I guess the, you could just tear the cookies off and leave the goo or like part. Val, half, half the goo. Val, or I can bring them, stop. I can put them in a Ziploc and bring them to a show and then <laughs> say to someone, I've done that before. I've brought snacks in different, sometimes I'll get uh, on the plane, they'll give me like a snack box and then it'll have like salami sticks or olive paste in it. And I'll be at the show like, hey, Tony Deppin. You want olive paste? to be like, fuck yeah! And you just <laughs> hand them this little tub. <laughs> but I don't want shit to go to waste, and I, I know people like it. So think about that. I've transported uh, I've transported olives to bring other people joy. And meat That's, products, too. There you go. Just pull out a salami. To, you know, <laughs> not your Kevin salami, Gil, but Kevin a, Gil pulling a out salami. salami. A salami. <laughs> I am not editing that out. Never. <laughs> Flip that and put it a, on I tonight. definitely said A. <laughs> yeah, get this up right away. We need a t- full TikTok press, uh, YouTube, Twitter. Get Sean from the hot tub to retweet it. <laughs> Kevin get Brett to tweet it with the eyeball emoji. Well, those are all my bones. They're all picked. And those were all the questions from chat. I appreciate you dealing with me. Uh, I enjoyed listening to you guys chat. Uh, Val, I'll kick it back to you and you can wrap us up. Hell yeah. This has been an absolute delight. It was fun actually getting to talk with you and not have like, because I never, I don't think I've ever really like spoken too much with you other than maybe like a little back and forth on Twitter. I think I've, you know, said hi a couple of times in person. Sure. Um, i We've kind of interacted in spaces a little bit, but then you get like a bunch of weirdos in there. Y'all, <laughs> y'all spaces attract some some interesting folk. What, um, in the audience or on the mic? Both. Both. Wow. Are you including? Is that? Are you speaking about that man, Nasty Leroy? I would never include that man, Nasty, Nasty Leroy, okay, yeah. on that list. All right. So then um, we're good. <laughs> We're on the same page. I, I know what to expect from, from Leroy at this point. It's Leroy some, of the, great. some of the randos that kind of come and go on there. I'm like, all right, y'all. <laughs> but we agree that we are nasty Leroy fans. Oh, the bald monkeys as a whole are fans of nasty Leroy. So the only the only politician that I currently recommend for re-election is the uh, the mayor of Slamtown. No, not the mayor of Slamtown. I'm sorry, that's John, our friend Johnny Game Changer. Sorry, what's Leroy's town? Pound Town, right? Yeah, Pound Town. Leroy is the mayor of Pound Town, so I definitely he's the only politician I currently support for re-election. However, if Johnny Game Changer decided to dust off his crown and resume activities as the mayor of Slamtown, I, I would probably also support Johnny. I, I would support Johnny Game Changer. I'll, maybe, I'll say it right now. Maybe we could have an incorporation match. Where oh my God. Winner, winner Can you takes imagine? <laughs> Johnny Game Changer versus Nasty Leroy. Yep. I'll take it one step further. 
Johnny Game Changer versus Nasty Leroy in a cinematic match for the 4th of July Backyard Wrestling Show. You know, that would be I the GCW 4th of July <laughs> Backyard Wrestling Show um, has a long storied history with that man. Um, Nasty oh, yeah. Leroy. <laughs> But this, I never saw anyone, you know, in person anyway, ever pull a pull a burner out and just during a wrestling match. You know what I mean? You've I've seen it on uh, mainstream television wrestling and vignettes and home invasion angles, but as far as r- pulling a, a a biscuit at ringside, that that's nasty Le- Le- Leroy territory, uh, and, and that was something something to be seen. And if you're not watching the GCW 4th of July shows, those are the highlight, truly just the highlight of the summer. 10, and, 10 would recommend. And not only are they the highlight of the summer, but they're the event that I guess where uh, Alex Zane first made his mark on the world. Alex Zane debuted, if you will, in the big time. The moment Alex Zane stepped into backyard wrestling on July 4th for Game Changer Wrestling, his life was never the, his life and his career was never the same again, Truly, in, in the was... best way possible. Now he's literally in best of the super juniors in Japan because what you know his ability, all that shit, his dedication. But it was getting seen at backyard wrestling that got him all his looks everywhere, and then he stepped through and delivered the fucking goods because he's amazing. Do you know that the Taco Bell Japan account? only follows three accounts and one of them is Alex Zane. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. That's the greatest thing ever. And they tweet about him now on the, or at least they have a few times they've sent out tweets about him on the Taco Bell Japan accounts. That's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it's, just, is, it's wonderful to see. That is a level of brand sponsorship that I truly can only dream of. <laughs> um, I hop. Can you imagine? Is, I'm I'm here for all of it. So whichever one of you wants to get me that sponsorship first, um, I hop Denny's either or. Yeah, it I'm down. Yourselves. I'd like a White Castle sponsorship. I would take that in a heartbeat. But if they want to just eliminate all the middlemen or focus it on the middlemen, just give me the Uber Eats uh, and the Uber, uh, you know, credit line, if you will, or just give me like a $500 credit for food and transportation every month. I could do a bunch of promos and mention them a lot. There we go. Done deal. You could do like little like vignettes from inside your Uber. Oh my God. I could do a show every time I get in an Uber. It's content. Yeah. yeah done. See? This is genius. <laughs> I don't know why they're content. not jumping on this. It's all content. The moment the door closes, the show begins. No matter what time. you <laughs> Like, what's going on? Oh, I'm drunk as hell. It's six o'clock in the morning, but I have this deal with Uber where they pay for all my rides, but I have to do a broadcast. I'm in. If that Who would be the best content. Um, oh my God. We'll just, we'll clip this out. We'll at Uber and we'll see what happens. All right, let's do it. The power of And if not, I bet some enterprising uh, podcast production unit or someone may want to jump on it because this shit is fucking money. Who cares if Uber pays for our Ubers? As long as someone pays for our Ubers. So right. we could open it up to dick pill companies, uh, wrestling shoot interview companies. We could let the control your narrative people advertise on here. <laughs> we could do whatever you want, Val Pancakes. We can get IHOP. Why not IHOP? Right? IHOP would be perfect. I'll take IHOP. I'll take like a Denny's. Um, yeah. If you, got, if you got pancakes, like I'm open to whatever you want to. What about scallion pancakes? I mean, not really for me, I don't think. Have you tried them? I haven't. I will tell you, but I just don't feel like that's something I would enjoy. I am a very picky eater, but also like, I don't know of anybody that has like a corner on that item. You know what I mean? Sure, like, sure. Yeah. Like when you think of pancakes, like you definitely think IHOP, you maybe think Denny's, yes. maybe Cracker Barrel. Mm-hmm. Like, you, yeah. you know, it's like you have like, the, like a diner. House, even. Waffle House, yeah. Any any traditional Waffle. diner. Waffle House. I'm sorry. Did you just use the they W? Serve, they serve pancakes at the at WH. Not any of the ones that I've ever been to. Really? Hold on. Oh, I can't. Let, my phone is on here. 
maybe then I apologize. I apologize for saying the uh, the W word. I thought that like many places, they saw the greatness of of uh, pancakes, but I I I think it's wrong that they don't acknowledge and celebrate pancakes like everyone should. I usually just get hash browns and bacon if I <laughs> if I end up at a waffle house. Wow. Oh man, I wish I could look that up right now. I mean, I guess it makes sense for them to not to, but it seems like to me, I never see one. I always feel like you feel like they. It's all. Don't most places have both? Yeah, it's like a Batman Joker situation. (laughs) Uh, As an added selling point to scallion pancakes. Uh, if you do ever have an opportunity to get them, one selling point is that sometimes they're served with with what's essentially like a, a small cup of peanut butter to dip them into. Hmm. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, especially when it's from the Thai food place. Something Fair to think enough. about because suddenly there's a flavor you're interested in. But also sometimes it's it's also comes with like a what you would expect, like a kind of soy sauce related dip which mm. you know is great but not the same you know what i mean yeah as, uh, i know you're obviously as a peanut butter fan i thought maybe that could draw you in you know if i ever am in a position where i try one i will tweet about it and i will tag you in it so that you know that i've got your pancake went down mm-hmm. you can look for any if you're ever ordering chinese food or thai food you'll often uh you'll see, might see a scallion pancake on there I'm like, I'll look. Like, I honestly just don't think I've ever really looked because it's like not usually. Yeah. Like well, the I would second go word for. would catch your attention, but yeah, as you're scrolling through, like the scallion would just be like, yeah. Yeah, like I'm gonna go, you know, oh, it's like want sesame chicken or something, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you so much for joining me tonight. This has been a, just a true delight. You have been absolutely wonderful. This has been so much fun. Um. This has been The Stack. I'm Val Pancakes, and this has been Kevin Gill. And be sure to check Kevin Gill out. Um, plug all of your socials if you have. I know you have Twitter, um, Instagram. I think you do Twitch sometimes. Um, yes. If you have YouTube, TikTok, OnlyFans, whatever you're doing, <laughs> plug you it can always, Merch. Uh Thank you for taking the time. Anyone who's watched to this extent, if they've watched the entire thing, the two parts, or whether they've just jumped on the second part, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting the stack. Thank you for supporting independent wrestling. You can check me out on social media, on Instagram and Twitter at OG Kevin Gill. I'm also on Facebook as KG Kevin Gill, which I should probably just change. And uh, I also have a regular uh, Facebook page as Kevin Gill, which is essentially like a public page. Um, I do have a Twitch, OG Kevin Gill. No, my Twitch is just Kevin Gill. Uh, I don't Twitch that much, but I, I want. I'm trying to get back into it. I have a website called dignifiedbastard.com where I sell some stuff and you can sometimes catch me on middle kingdom wrestling when I'm not at game changer wrestling, middle kingdom wrestling is a wrestling company in China that I do some commentary for. There's the underground wrestling Alliance in San Jose, which is incredible. They're now also in San Francisco. Uh, They've been, they have some great, great content on YouTube. That's free to watch. It's very, uh, it's like a movie, the way it's shot. The film quality is amazing. Sound quality is amazing. Definitely something to check out with Agua. Um, I got to send some love, like I said, to uh, Deathmatch Worldwide for my fucking sick to death. Zero royalties paid to John Wayne Murdoch, Alex Cologne shirt that says Bridesmaid. And Sunday, the score is settled inside the cage of survival. Yes, John Wayne Murdoch was able to squeak out a victory controversial one involving Alex Cologne being injured. But at the end of the day, John Wayne Murdoch, a tough as nails competitor, a sick, sick, fucking tough bastard. He showed he could fight at the highest level possible. He showed he could take a hellacious biblical style ass whipping and still fight back. And the record books will show he holds a victory over Alex Cologne. It's now tied one to one. And this Sunday inside the cage of survival, we're going to find the fuck out what it's all about. Does John Wayne Murdoch have what it takes to go toe-to-toe and beat the greatest deathmatch wrestler in North America? Or is it the Duke's time to shine? We're going to find out on a per fucking view. 
And uh, that was funny because I was a plug for this uh, T-shirt company, Deathmatch Worldwide. And in closing, I would like to spend a, send a very special shout out to everyone at GCW Merch, everyone at the patreon.com slash Game Changer Wrestling, where I do a uh, several times a month podcast with Brett Lauderdale, where we take questions from great people just like you. So please join us there. And last but certainly not least are my very good friends at Real Kind Meds. I recommend you follow Real Kind Meds on Instagram, on Twitter. Um, what is it? Real Kind Meds 421 on Instagram. And I apologize. I don't know their Twitter off the top of my head. I'm going to have to get a little laminated card. But I recommend you follow Real Kind Meds. Tell them KG sent you. And, uh, you know, what a company, what a team, what a product. You probably really should be following and then getting in the inbox of Real Kind Meds. Excellent Dude, pitch. Plug, plug the fucking Rama with that promo in the middle. Can we isolate that promo, the hype promo for Murdoch and uh, and uh, Alex? Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> and on that note, once again, thank you, Kevin Gill, for joining us. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out during the first half, watching this back later, catching up on what you missed. We had a great time. Um, join us next week, same stack time, same stack place, as I speak with Gary from Paradigm Pro Wrestling. So oh, shit. It's going to be fun. Thank you, everybody. And thank you once again, Kevin Gill. Peace out. Stay up. Keep that PMA.